Okay, welcome to Beginner Beat Talk. Yeah! This is Mike, oh wait, I'm not Mike Comer. Uh, I'm Ben Feingold filling in for Mike Comer. I can't really fill in for his shoes, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, Mike is busy directing the GM Norm event. Boy, is he busy. I mean, he has to like maybe start the clocks, maybe make announcements, occasionally put kings in the center on the wrong squares. So that's, that's not easy. Um, well, the format of the class, which is never followed, is that the beginners in the class bring their games in. I wish there were people strong enough in this class I could call beginners, but we'll call them beginner beginners. Sort of like Ben Simon working the camera. He's a beginner beginner. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Now, basically we're gonna spend the whole class saying you should play H6 to stop everything to G5 every move. Don't ever let them play anything to G5. Oh wait, that's Mike's class, Never mind. So what I do is I looked at games I played a long time ago before chess even existed. We sort of invented the game. These were played in the early 80s against people who were slightly lower rated than me. In some cases, a thousand points lower. Now this game was played in my first US Open in St. Paul, 1982. And I was white and I was rated a little more than 200 points higher than my opponent. So you might not recognize the openings if you follow my chess, which you probably don't anyway because, well, I was 12 years old, so I played different openings then. Okay, so I played e4, and my opponent played the Ali Kynes defense. I'm sure Kummer wouldn't like this because of e5, but I didn't play e5. e5 would be the best move, and therefore I didn't play it. I played knight c3, keeping my opponent on his toes. But then I played e5, and everybody was happy. Now, luckily, black can play every move in this position. Knight d7's okay, knight e4 is okay, d4 is okay. Probably knight g4 is okay, although I haven't seen it. Uh, he played knight e4, and I played knight back to e2, confusing all of you. The purpose of this move is actually to try to trap the knight on e4. The knight can't escape this way, can't escape this way, unless it's intoxicated, can't escape that way. And if I can control these two squares, maybe I can take his knight for free. Okay, he moved his knight away, now I can't take it for free. And he moved it back. Okay, now this game was played when I was 12 years old, so I played super aggressively. Now, I would play the most passive move possible. I'm not even sure what that is. H3, A3. But this was, uh, was younger then, so I played E6, sacrificing a pawn to make it difficult for his king to get safe, and more importantly, to sort of kill his bishop on F8. After he takes the pawn, it's hard to move this pawn out of the way to develop his bishop. Okay, I played knight f4. What's the threat, anyone? Let's call on somebody who's not paying attention. Uh, wait, you are paying attention. What's white threatening here? What do I want to do next? Take, Take this pawn here? No, that, yeah, don't This pawn here, then the queen is trapped. Yes. So my opponent played knight to f6. Now his bishop is protecting his pawn and I played bishop to d3. Okay, so I'm down a pawn, but I have more development and both of his bishops are blocked. If you ask me, why did I make any certain move? I don't know because it was in 1982. I don't remember why I did stuff yesterday. So. Okay, c5 attacking the center, c3 defending. We developed our knights. Okay, I, we I attacked his e6 pawn and then I took it, hooray. Okay, and now I've won my pawn back. That's pretty awesome. And he took a pawn. And this is what we call a poison pawn. And if you've eaten here before, you know what I'm talking about. It's a slow audience today. Okay, well, it's slow every day. So here, black still has the main issue he's always had, the bishop on f8. It can't move, he can't castle. And he decided to take a pawn for his troubles. Now, uh, we're going to learn what a Zwischenzug is, because that's a fun word to learn. What language is Zwischenzug from? Danny. No idea. You could guess. French. Very close. You, you, you get a border, it's a border country. It has Zug in it. Meredith. Um, border to France? Yeah, Zwischenzug. What language? I'm an American. We don't study any other countries. Ah, but you could guess. <laughs> it would be funny if you said, like, China. That's what I get from the kids' classes. Exactly. No, it has Zug, Z-U-G. What? Is it Germany? German, yeah, German. Now, German words, Wischenzug, 
means in between move. If I take his queen with the idea of winning a free knight, free knights are good. He doesn't play pawn takes queen. What does he play instead? The silence is deafening. Castle, Castle would be illegal because my queen is, is stopping that, so it won't let me. It's a mean computer. Also, you need to take this queen. You just have to take it later. You have to play an in-between move before you take it to avoid losing your knight for nothing. About half of the Zwischenzugs are checks, because then if it's check, the person has to deal with that. Then you can take the queen later. You did, you take the knight check, and then you take the queen, and now black is still up a pawn. So I didn't play queen takes queen, I played knight takes knight. Notice that my knight is defending my queen. That's fortuitous. And if he takes my queen, and I take, and I give my bishop away to do a typo, and I take his queen, now I'm up a piece. I have three pieces and he has two. So he didn't do that, he took my knight. Okay, now if you count the pawns, black is up a pawn. However, black is in a lot of trouble because none of these pieces have moved. The bishop can't move. In fact, none of them can move. And I've already castled, and I have a lead in development, and I'm higher rated, and I was younger and, you know, full of fight. Okay, so I played bishop b5 check. And he played king to d8, because if he plays knight to d7, I can take it. I can take with the queen or the bishop. Either way is good. Okay, he played king to d8. And I developed my last piece, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I do remember, bishop e3. Now I have all my pieces out. My rooks are connected. And I can't say any of that about black's position. And white has two bishops, and so forth. Now we're going to vote, because voting's fun. Okay. You can vote for black wants to trade queens, black doesn't want to trade queens, or Pat Buchanan. Those are the three things you can vote for. Okay? Some people vote for Buchanan by accident. In fact, a lot of people are going to vote by, for Trump by accident. Okay? Mainly bridge players. They're like, Trump, that sounds good. They don't realize it's an actual person. Okay, so should black trade queens? Who says black wants to trade queens? Who says black doesn't want to trade queens? It looks like the whole room votes for Pat Buchanan. Okay. What? What's that? I want to queen. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so Buchanan six, trading queens one. They're both good choices. Black wants to trade queens because then he won't get checkmated. White's king is much, much, much safer. So black played queen e4 to trade queens. If black wants to trade queens, that means white doesn't want to trade queens. So did I trade queens with white? You did not. I did not. In fact, I checkmated my opponent because that's better than trading queens. Now, normally I don't sacrifice material, but I was 12, so I did a lot of stuff I wasn't supposed to do. So I played bishop to b6 check. That moves nothing to sneeze at. That leads to mate. Okay, he has to take it, and I take with check. He has one legal move, and I check him again. And instead of blocking with his queen and giving his queen away, his phone rang instead. He actually was forfeited here for his cell phone ringing, but it was a very strange incident because it was 1982. So we were very confused how the guy's phone could ring. It was really weird. Okay, he played king to b8. Now there's more than one move that wins. I played bishop to c6, threatening queen takes b7 checkmate. Would anyone in the audience like to explain how black stops checkmate in one? What does black do to stop queen takes pawn checkmate? Move the rook up. Move the rook up. Now he did something else, he resigned. But let's move his rook up because I don't see another way to do it. Now his king can't move off the back rank because he just put his rook there, so checkmate. Right, although rook a7 does stop checkmate, it allows another one. The only other way to stop checkmate is to start giving your queen away, which is a temporary measure. <clears throat> then when I take your queen, I'll checkmate you again. So instead of getting checkmated, he resigned. Now, if this was a Paul Morphy game, I would explain how great white played and how bad black played, but since it was my game, I'll explain it even more. <laughs> okay, white castled, castling is good. White has a rook on the open file, that's good. 
White has two pieces attacking the black king. That's good. Black has most of his pieces on the back rank, and most of them haven't moved yet, and the game's over. And black made a lot of queen moves, which is not good. Okay, so white did everything right, black didn't. I was forced to sacrifice a piece, but that was very safe because these pieces are just terrible. There's actually a book about this tournament, which makes no sense, and this game is in that book, which also makes no sense. So if you ever see a book on the 1982 US Open, you'll, you'll see this game. Okay, very suspicious. So this game I was black, and this game was played in 1983, and everything got messed up. Control two? Control two? I don't believe it. Okay, now I believe it. Okay, and this was played against Jean-Paul Pejeron. Even though it says J. Pejeron, I still remember the guy. Even though it was 20, 30, 40, 1,000, 3,000 years ago. I still remember this game. Well, not the game, but I remember the player. Okay, so I played the Scandinavian or center counter, which I don't play now, but okay. And now, if Mike Comer was teaching the class, he would be right black for moving his queen out because the queen keeps getting attacked, and he'd be right. Okay, now I didn't move my queen anymore. I started moving my minor pieces, which makes more sense. Let's move our minor pieces out. Good, good, good. Okay, now black has all of his minor pieces out, as does white. Now here's something I don't understand. I'm sure you'll explain it to me, being the beginners you are. Right, Danny? So when I teach chess, I say get all your minor pieces out in castle, and my students nod their head. I think they're just listening to music on their headphones, and they're like, yeah. And then, and then when they play their game, I never see it. It's move 20, and there's like 30 pawn moves, and all the pieces are on the back row. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'll move my pieces out later. Okay, I'm like, what, after you're checkmated? When grandmasters play, or masters, international masters, they move all their pieces out, like here. And this guy was probably rated like 1800. He still moved all his pieces out. He's like, yeah, you move all your pieces out. Okay, so he played bishop d3. Now this guy did something a lot of weaker players do, which is good for beginner beatdown. A lot of beginners like to trade all of the pieces. Then if it's king against king, they won't lose. That's their plan. But if you move your pieces out, and then you move them again to trade them, you're not helping your position. Okay, for example, in this position, these rooks aren't on open files, and the rooks aren't connected. It would be nicer if the rooks were in the center. I think you would agree, no matter how good you are at chess, the rook on a1 and f1 isn't really doing it. We gotta get our pieces active. Bishop d3 just trades pieces. Okay, now I wanna win, because I'm the highest rated player in this game, of the two of us. So I castle long. And now when we castle opposite sides, there's a good chance for checkmating attacks. If we castle on the same side, and we trade all the pieces, it might be a draw. Now a draw is unlikely because we castled opposite wings. Okay, he played a3. Usually that's a bad move. I think he wants to play b4 attacking my queen. I took his bishop, he took back, and I played knight e5 because I didn't see pawn takes knight, but I was 13 years old, so give me a break. Did he play pawn takes knight? What do you think? No, no, don't think so? The German term for this is ish don't think so. Okay, just don't tell any Germans that. After taking, I would take his queen. Now, white has a problem here. Problem is his queen's attacked, which he obviously sees, but my rook is attacking his pawn. So if he moves his queen away, he would like to move it where it's defending its pawn. For some reason, he didn't do that. It, the only square that I see, maybe you guys see more, is queen to e3, although I guess he could have moved his queen backwards. The problem with queen e3 is this knight is now forking these pieces and pawns. My rook is attacking his pawn. I think he should have played queen to d1, although his pawn on d4 is still pinned. So if he did that, I could play something like queen b6, threatening basically everything. A lot of stuff is under attack. He just gave his pawn away, he played queen e2, and I was like, all right, and I took his pawn. Now, some of you are wondering why white doesn't play queen takes knight. And the answer is, my queen's defending my knight, so he can't do that. Also, my rook's attacking his knight, he has to do something about that. So he played queen e3 now. And now, uh, you've probably seen the bumper stickers when you're driving around here, 
uh, WWMD, what would Morphe do? Yeah, so Morphe, unlike Brian Boitano, who would do something else, man, what a slow class. I mean, good job, good class. Uh, would, would move his rook, because his rook isn't doing anything in the corner, and the rook is attacked, so rook to d8. Now the rook on a8, h8, isn't doing nothing. My rooks are doubled on the open line, and I'm a pawn up, hooray. Okay, he played b4 attacking my queen. I moved my queen. In fact, I have to move my queen there because my, his queen's attacking my knight. I have to defend my knight. Queen c7 does it. He played queen c1. Somebody asked me why he played queen c1. Somebody ask. Why does he play c1? I don't know. <laughs> I think he was afraid of knight c4. And then, it, like, for example, let's make a nothing move, rook a2. Knight c4 attacking his queen and I unleash my queen on his knight. So this would actually win a piece. Yeah. Okay, so he played queen c1. Now I did a discovered double, triple, uh, you know, Lutz with a twist, impressing the judges. I have a rook on his knight, and my queen is almost on his knight. That means if I move my knight anywhere, doesn't matter where, anywhere it can legally move, then my queen is attacking his knight. However, if I move my knight, he'll move his knight away. Unless I move my knight and put him in check. Then he won't move his knight away because that's illegal. So I played knight f3 check. Okay, and this game was played a long time ago. So he was thinking, oh, give me the knight, which you wouldn't think now because that song's too old. He took my knight and I took his knight. Now, he's, not only is he down a pawn, his king's side is ruined. It's not ruined because Family Guy wasn't out yet. Now here, he made a mistake. And this is something you were taught wrong by everybody, especially Mike Comer, especially. Like, if a book said something and Mike Comer said something and they were the same thing, you would believe Mike Comer first, obviously, because this is his class. And they would both be wrong about this. Most books will tell you, most books, all books will tell you, when you're ahead material, you should trade, okay? Which is not correct. You should trade if you have a bad piece and you're trading for a good piece. Also, when you're trading queens, you should see whose king is safer. Whose king is safer, white or black? I think everybody said black. Black is correct. So white wants to trade queens, then white won't get checkmated. Unless you want to get checkmated, which white did? So he got checkmated. He played queen e1, not trading queens, giving me the f3 pawn, come on. Kind of move his queen e1. So he went too far. Now, how does he defend his h pawn? No, he defended it. He did. King h2. And now I attacked his pawn Again, with you at home. Incorrect. No, I heard them. Danny, what's the answer? I played rook h4. Yeah, now it's not, there's good and there's not good. That's not good. There's no way to defend h3 with checkmate to follow. Now, obviously, queen h3 is going to lead to mate. If he stops queen h3 with queen e3, I could just take with the rook, and then I don't know what you prefer. I don't know which mate you like better. They're both good. So after rook h4, he resigned. So instead of being a pawn down in the end game and losing a long game, he decided to get mated quickly. In this position, it was very important that he trades queens, defends his pawn, and I'll have good end game technique and win, maybe. But by not defending his f pawn, he just gets made it immediately. Terrible decision on his part. That's why it's beginner beat down. He got beat down. It happens. Okay, now this is a very funny, the story's much funnier than the game. Okay, now this may confuse some of you, but I was born. And this game has to do with me being born. I'm not even kidding. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to fill you in on it. Okay. The doctor that delivered me was this guy, the guy I'm playing. 
And my, for some reason, my mom or my dad thought he was an OBGYN. No, he, he was like a witch doctor. Okay, so somehow I'm alive, somehow. But uh, his name is Howard Gaba. He organized the Motor City Open in Detroit for a thousand years. He was a chess player, organizer, and director, uh, and he was a doctor. He was a very suspicious doctor. Uh, I don't mean because he delivered me, because he basically just gave you penicillin. That was it. Which worked about 90% of the time. 10% time would kill you, but 90% is pretty good nowadays, right? And he also charged $10. If you went to the doctor, it was $10. It didn't matter what was wrong with you, $10. Not, so anyway, uh, also occasionally he would cheat. But I don't trust anybody who doesn't cheat a little. So. so he was known for cheating a little, for delivering me without being an OBGYN. I don't know how I'm alive. And also for getting crushed by me. He's known for that too. OK, so this game is pretty funny. It was a Queen's Gambit declined, as opposed to being born and declined. But I was, I'm alive. Don't, don't let this fool you. Can you zoom in on that? No. You got that? Did you, you got it? Yeah, I got it. You see it? Yeah. yeah. I'm not Frankenstein. I'm a grandmaster. Are you white? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have the white pieces, and my opponent played the Ragozin, which wasn't very popular then. Okay. Now my did, opponent did something which is very beginner-esque. Uh, when you have a bishop pinning a knight, is that better for the bishop or the knight? A bishop, because the knight can't move. So often in such situations, white will make a move that will unpin the knight, or he'll attack the bishop and say, hey, stop pinning my knight. My opponent's like, I'm taking the knight anyway, so I didn't have to waste time attacking his bishop. That was nice of him. The problem with trading this bishop is the bishop that you're left with is a little suspicious. It's blocked by every pawn. All of black's pawns are on white squares, and they're all blocking the bishop. Okay. So he attacked my bishop. Did I take his knight, or did I maintain the pin? Ha-ha, I tricked you all. No, of course. Bishop h4. I actually have no idea what I did, but I mean, I'm me, so I played bishop h4. Even in 1984, I was me. No matter what George has to say about that. OK, he castled, and a6 doesn't make any sense. Now, when my opponent plays a6, my assumption is if I move my bishop, he'll take, and then he'll play b5, and then he'll develop his bishop. That's my assumption. Um, so I didn't let him do that. I played c5. And the game went on. His bishop is still terrible. g5. I wish you were better at chess so you would realize how bad g5 is. So someday when you're a grandmaster, Come look at this lecture on YouTube, look at G5 and go, oh man, now I know what he meant. It's not as bad as F6 though. Well, not in general. In G5 here is, if I had an engine, which I do, but it would take me seconds to find, so I'm not going to look for it. It would say G5 is the worst. Okay, G5, now there's no pawns in front of his king here, and I'm, I'm ready. I got everything over here to attack his king. Now, this game I was 14, oh, actually it was the Motor City Open. Ooh, so I was 15. Wow, I was pretty old this game. So I was 15 years old, so I didn't sack anything. If I was like 10, 11, 12, I would have I sacked my knight. But, but I'm, I'm older now, more mature. Bishop g3. When you think Ben Feingel, what's the first word you think? Mature. Okay, so bishop g3, knight e4. I took that guy. I put my knight in the middle and we traded. Now, my bishop's pretty good. And his bishop, not so much. His bishop's never going to be any good. Also, I got h4. I got queen h5. Now, based on all of my preachings over the years, I'm sure you've read the good book by Ben Feingold, what move did black play here, which I say never play? F6. F6. Yeah, now his king has nothing in front of it. Okay, we're going to take advantage of that. Okay, he played b5 to get his bishop out where he can't do anything. I played h4, of course. We're going to put it in h. We're going to come get him. He played queen e7. And now, I actually played a good move. I'm actually surprised. Meredith can't believe it. If Meredith was here, oh, hey. OK, so normally, 99% of you would play queen h5 without thinking, because the queen and rook make a good battery. The problem is, the queen is in front of the rook, 
So after something like Queen G7, if it was bug house, I could really crush him, but it's regular chess. Okay, so I actually, I want my rook in front of my queen. So what move did I play? H6. Rook h6. Now when I play queen h5, that's annoying. And usually I use my married twice joke, but I was 15 here, so I only married once. No, I'm kidding. Oh, but I married twice at 15? No. Okay, so my opponent played queen g7 attacking my rook, and I played queen h5. Now, it's unstoppable that I'll play rook g6 winning his queen. You can try to stop it, but you can't. So if two grandmasters were playing, probably black would resign. My opponent played rook a7. And this was probably the first game in my life which would indicate that later in my life I might be a good chess player. Because everybody in this room, including me now, would play rook to g6, which is, which is winning. I'm not going to argue. Okay, but I played a better move. I can play rook g6 whenever I want. When my opponent played rook c7, what was his next move going to be? Or rook a7, did I say c7? Rewind the tape. C C6. He's going to play c6 and his rook can defend his king. I made sure he would never play c6. Because I played c6. Yeah, I'll play rook g6 when I feel like it. Now his rook on a7 is really good. And his bishop on c8 is even better. So I trapped two of his pieces. Do you, do you remember at all how long it took you to find that? No, nah, probably not long. Probably playing fast. And, and okay, rook G, I'm sure a computer says rook g6 is just as good. I would guess if you put it on a supercomputer, it's going to play c6 now because I play rook g6 when I want to. And c6 must have been a good move because he resigned. Because he can't move his rook or his bishop, and I'm going to win his queen next move. So even though I didn't win any material, my queen and rook are attacking his king, pinning his queen. His rook and bishop are trapped. And also, this bishop didn't get a chance to move on, on c8. Not, not a good bishop. This is actually a big issue in the queen's gambit decline. Normally, Mike Kummer, when he teaches the class, is showing double king pawn openings and Somebody's playing knight g5 and taking on f7, and Kummer gets all upset. When I show queen pawn openings, it's very common the bishop on c8 is being blocked by all these pawns. This is a big issue for black and a lot of queen pawn openings. The bishop doesn't get out, which means the rook doesn't get out, and everybody's unhappy except white. White's pretty happy. Okay, this is a game I played in 1986. I was already 2370. Oh, also the Motor City Open, so I was 16. Yeah, because it was in November. Motor City Open's over Thanksgiving. Still exists. Uh, okay, this game's cool because I let my opponent trick me, and then, then there was Trick or Treat, which I guess was a month before this game. Okay, I played the Carol Khan, I guess. Yeah. D3, very suspicious. Knight takes, also suspicious. And I seize the initiative immediately. F5, H3. What is this, a Mike Kummer class? H3? Okay. Bishop C5, castles. Now, I blundered a pawn, which most of you beginners would take, especially Joe. Queen takes E5. Not because he's a bad chess player, but because Joe has an inferior phone. He'd be thinking about that, like, ah, oh, my phone, and they play queen e5. Be th then he'd be like, oh, wait, my queen. <laughs> so what would black do in this position, Meredith? Not paying attention. Talking to the person I'm making fun of. Terrible. Notice the queen and king are sort of lined up here. You hear what I'm saying? So what would I do? Rook, rook over here, uncastle. No, oh, over here. Yeah. yeah, then he's in trouble. Right. Okay, let me get my, my great phone. I'll take a picture of that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so instead, he played knight to f3, attacking my pawn. Now, the bishop is a little suspicious, blocked by his queen, and I have a lot of space in the center. So I played knight d7, again, hoping for this to happen with the same rook e8, but he didn't fall for that. He played g3. 
So he's trying to get his bishop out, but he's sort of blocked this way, so he's going the other way. If I was white, I would castle so that my queen and king aren't lined up forever. If they're lined up forever, eventually I'm going to do something good. G3 is too slow, and I played E4. Paul Morphy would be proud of me. Opening up the center when my opponent's king is in the center and I've castled. Something I tell my students to do every game. Now, unfortunately, the norm tournament here has a lot of bad players. Okay? I'm not going to mention Ron Burnett's name. Okay? Ron Burnett yesterday against Andre Gorovets, basically the same thing happened to him. He was white, his king was in the center, and the center got opened up, and by move 12, the computer said Ron Burnett was losing. Okay? And usually when you're international master and you're white, you can make it to move 12, usually. And then he played out in a lost position for 30 moves, so it looked good. It was very similar to this because the center got opened and Ron Burnett's king was just sitting in the center. So obviously I could play slowly and eventually develop my bishop and get my rook in the center. But since his king is on e1, we have to punish him immediately. e4, open the center. Knight g5, open the center. Now, my opponent tricked me. Oh no. He played the very aggressive, the most aggressive move ever. Anyone? Queen to e6. Queen to e6. Oh no. So I moved my king. And then he checked me, forking my king and queen. So I took. Now, his queen's a little funny and his king's a little funny, so I play knight to e5. His queen has a lot of squares to go to. If you're at home, I'm kidding. Notice how his queen is attacked. Now, if white had already castled, his game would be okay, but since his queen is virtually trapped and his king is in the center, he's in a lot of trouble. And when I played pawn takes pawn on d3, I was hoping he would play for checkmate. Unfortunately for him, it's the wrong person getting checkmated. My king is safe, his isn't. What are you posting on my Facebook while making fun of your phone? Okay. I can't even read it. I'm sure it just agrees with me. Okay, so he checked me, and now he realized his queen is in trouble. Where did his queen go? B3. B3. Okay, now we got to go get him. Knight f3. Oh, I played bishop e6? Oh, because his queen's on b3. Man, I used to be good when I was 16. My phone wasn't too good, but I was a good chess player. Okay, so his queen is defending c2, which is very important for later in the game when I checkmate him. And so by playing bishop e6, I make his queen move away from c2, and he's like, well, a piece is a piece. So he took my bishop. But now his queen's not defending c2. If he plays queen a4 to maintain the defense, I can just play b5. Okay, so he's like a piece is a piece. And now I check him. He plays the only legal move. Too hard for the class? King d1. Now I check. Now uh, he has three legal moves. One of them gets mated and two loses queen. And I think... The one that loses his queen also gets mated. That would have been the funniest one. So king e2, I have knight d4 check, forking his king and queen. And if he plays king takes, I could also fork his king and queen. Or I could play queen takes check first. Then he has to play king b1. Man, his game looks terrible. I don't see how to mate him, but it looks terrible. I guess this would be good. Rook e8, attacking his queen, and rook e1 check. That looks pretty good. Not sure if it's better than just checking and taking his queen. Ah, so many riches. Okay, he played the worst move, but it ends all of his misery. So James Kahn approved. When is this game, 86? Somebody, somebody call a Stephen King. Anybody get any of that? No, nothing. Nothing in there? No. Hit, hit your head on the, yeah, but it's a book and a movie. Come on. They made fun of it on Family Guy? No, that was funny. Okay, so king c1 was played, ending all of his misery. And now his legs were no longer broken. Queen takes d2, checkmate. So I didn't win his queen. 
I didn't faint, I was upset? Okay, and that's checkmate, so I won. But bishop e6 is a cool move because if I don't play bishop e6 and just check him first and check him again, now he can take with the queen defending against the mate. And now I would still take black because white's king is terrible, but winning his queen or mating him is even better. Also, if I play knight f3 and then bishop e6, he'll probably figure out what's up. He'll be like, wait a minute, something bad's happening. So I play bishop e6 first to give him more to think about. And now he probably thought this wasn't very good. I think when he played king c1, he probably saw it was mate, but at least he saved his queen. I wonder if he saw it was mate. Yeah, probably not. So in that game, white didn't castle, white didn't move his pieces out, but he did make a lot of queen moves. How many queen moves did I make? One, it was checkmate. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to move your queen every move, then your other pieces will get mad at you. Also, you want to castle, my king is safe in the corner, my opponents generally didn't castle. That's why they're featured on beginner beatdown. When you play Mike Comer, you know he's going to castle and probably play h6 or h3. In fact, Mike Comer likes h3 with white. The slower, the better. Now, in this game, my opponent played h3 and g3, d3, made a lot of pawn moves, but he didn't castle, and he actually had a lot of chances to castle. If we go back in the game, I would have castled with white here like every move because then my king's then on e1 getting checkmated. I would have castled here, I would have castled here, and now it's too late. And here, I would have played queen takes d3, and then tried to castle later. And, after the, and here I would have castled. Although this is getting a little late in the game. But, I would, but knight f7 just loses. So he wins material. Now, for those of you who like winning a queen, you're correct. After king g8, Taking the queen is fun. Some of you know smothered mate. Who knows smothered mate? And more importantly, who knows the difference between smothered mate and stalemate? Okay, that's more important. That's a question we get asked here often. After knight h6 check, all of you are thinking, yay, it's smothered mate. Okay, you're like, smothered mate is the best. See smothered mate, see? Unfortunately, Black can take with the knight, and the rook is defending f7. So if I had played king to h, if I had played king to g8, I don't think my opponent would have blundered his queen. I think he would have taken my queen with check. So what did I do instead? What did black do here? I took the knight, yeah, and then, okay, now I checkmate him. It's a, it's a small difference. So when the king is in the center, and other king is castled, the king that's castle wants to open the center. All the pawns are gone, all the pieces attack. Your attack will likely be successful when your opponent has all their pieces on the back row here and they've made about 10 queen moves. That'll teach that guy to play me. Now I make fun of him 30 years later. Right, that'll learn him. Next time he'll think twice before getting paired with me. And now, as Gene Wilder is apt to say, class is dismissed. I say class dismissed. Gene Wilder says is. I don't know.